Welcome back to Sewing with Tay. Uh, today's project is a DIY gear shift hoodie. I saw these little cute things and I definitely had to make one. Let's get into it. The pattern is free. It's available on my website. I'll put a link down there to the tutorial so you can see it. The first thing you got to do is cut your fabric. I like to cut stuff on the fold. If you don't like to cut stuff on the fold, then you don't got to. But I cut the back and the front on the fold and the bottom hemband. There's a sleeve here, a pocket, and the hood. The sleeve is also cut on the fold and so is the hood. You know, like I said, everything is cut on the fold. For the fabric, you want to find something like a sweatshirt. I'm going to be completely honest. All the fabrics that I use to make these little mini hoodies thus far are all recycled fabric because Joann's don't be selling sweatshirt fabric like nice ones and that's all we got in my city so I found some old raggedy sweatshirts and I use it to make these projects so we got two sleeves cut on the fold one front one back one bottom hem cut on the fold only one pocket and a hood caught on the fold again so step one is we need to sew the shoulders together from the front and the back pieces. So I'm trying to show y'all here. I'm still working on getting this angle right for the camera. Uh, trying to film myself sewing with my arm and all that jazz is not in the way. It's a work in progress, y'all. I've seen some good videos on YouTube, but I'm still struggling on how to get mine looking that way. So this is the angle we got for today. But we're going to get our front and our back pieces. And we're just going to stitch them at the shoulders. This is a very small seam. And feel free to adjust these patterns as needed. You can make your shoulder seam longer. Make it kind of more drop shoulder. That's your that's your business. So I my pins are on top of my machine. So I'm going to go ahead and I put a little pin into my uh, fabric. So you can see I'm going to sew from here to here on both sides of the shoulders for this mini hoodie. This hoodie can be made pretty quickly. It took me a while because I was filming, photographing, taking notes of things I wanted to update. But you, the steps are really quick and really short processes. So once you get those shoulders sewn together, make sure you clip your threads because a happy garment, a clean garment is a happy garment. That's what they taught us in school. So this next step, I almost forgot to shoot it. One of the woes of filming and sewing at the same time. But you want to put that Kanga pocket on the front of your garment before you sew everything all together it just makes life easier so here on this tutorial i seamed the bottom first and then left the top open on the tutorial i did this the other way you can do whichever way you want so once you get that front pocket on and your shoulder sewn together you're gonna get your sleeves i did not put notches on my patterns that i put on the website but the, the notches are just for reference so i put a little snip at the center of the sleeve that gets connected to the body which is the wide part of the sleeve and then i'm going to use that slit and line it up with uh, the shoulder seam putting right sides together so the right side of your fabric facing the right side of your uh, garment meaning your shoulder seam seam allowance is on the outside and I'm just going to pin the shoulder at the center and then, you know, at the end on both edges to make sure it don't slip around. This fabric was a thinner, like, jersey-ish fabric. So it needed a little bit more pins than some other ones that I've done. So I've made this, like, a few times and I've used a heavier fleece. And it's not as slippery and it moves around. But here you can see I have my center notch and I'm going to line that center notch up with my shoulder seam. And then I am going to sew them together. I sewed 90% of the seams on this little garment at a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch because you didn't, we don't want a lot of bulky seams. Like I made this with a fleece and it was difficult. And I also used a sweater knit and it was difficult when you're having to like turn everything right side out. It gets a little thick. So smaller seam allowances or trimming your seam allowance afterwards, the pattern accounts for, you know, a quarter seam allowance, but you can do whatever you know makes you happy but the quarter of an inch sometimes can be tricky with knit fabrics because they might want to slip under the sewing foot but it worked for me so I just chose to do a quarter of an inch around everything that I sewed and there we go with my arm being in a way as I already told y'all don't be yelling at me because I'm sorry I wasn't going to refilm it <laughs> once I have my sleeve sewn on you get this like shape here and then I'm going to fold it in half 
so that uh, the ends go together and the sleeves go together and the right sides are touching each other. So it's very important. You don't want to sew this with the wrong sides out. You want to sew it so that the right sides are together on the inside of the pins, the garment. So I'm going to start pinning down the bottom of the sleeve and down the side seam. You just want to make sure that that side seam is lined up because if it's not, then you will end up with a little hole or a gap in your project. But it's not that simple and there's nothing very hard about making this thing. So I think we can show sew an L basically down the sleeve, down the side to get the actual hoodie body. So here's a close up. I wanted you to be able to see where you need to make sure that line matches up so there's no holes there. I did not film this, but you have to flip it inside out. But before you do that, you need to make sure you clip that corner because you see how that side I just looked at was a little iffy. It's because there's too much fullness right here in the corner. So you want to trim that and you want to cut into the corner, but don't cut through your stitch. And that'll help release your um, underarm and make it look a little bit nicer. Feel free to take this to the ironing board and give it a good press to make it look nicer i didn't feel like doing that tonight and this was just you know another tester that i was doing but the next step i think the the sleeves should be stitched down so they don't be moving all around or you know whatever when this is in your car so i placed the sleeves where i thought they should go and i checked the pocket to make sure the pocket uh would cover the sleeves and once i kind of got that worked out and I was clear I put a pin in them and I took it to my sewing machine and just put like two or three stitches in it just to hold it and make sure that um they're not coming out and this is definitely a little bit difficult to do because the side seams are sewn together but it's kind of hard to do it before the side seams are sewn together because the arm sleeves aren't in the right place so I just put a quick couple of stitches in it just to hold it and once you get those um sleeves kind of pinned down then you can go back and either stitch the top or the bottom of your pocket whichever one you chose to do i find that stitching the top is better and then instead of stitching the bottom i like let it connect into the bottom of the hoodie that's an option so you don't have to do two stitches you just do one but this one it has two so my sleeves are inside the pocket and you got to fluff it out a bit and then i'm going to go ahead and pin the top of that pocket down so i can make sure that it's flat and that it is not straight i am the king of king i am the queen of sewing a patch pocket cricket so i was like how can i make sure that this pocket is straight or straighter or at least straight looking so i you can see me here adjusting one side to make sure and when i pin this i make sure that i only pin through the first layer because you don't want to pin this all the way through because it has to go in your car so you can see here is an opening and i'm just going to go back to the machine and stitch an edge stitch along the top edge of the pocket you can choose to do a little bit of the side seam i think i've decided to go back and do that after i was done but i did not film it it just makes it look a little bit more closer to a hoodie but definitely not a something you have to do for this to work so i got my pocket stitched on and then the next thing you need to do is the bottom band so once you get your garment cleaned up and all the extra threads thrown away we're going to grab that long rectangular piece so that we can get started with the bottom band for the bottom band this is going to be really easy so the bottom band was cut on the fold so you have one side on the fold and one side with two edges the side that has two edges you're going to ensure right sides are together and then we're going to sew a quarter of an inch along that straight edge and as i'm doing that I'm just gonna let you know um, your little body is done so now we're just going to start working on the trims and extra pieces that go with it this being the bottom band and then on to the drawstring elastic uh hoodie once you stitch that uh short side together it's going to give you a circle and you want to fold those in half putting both straight edges together on the long side so you want to make sure you're folding it long ways and matching up the edges and that the fold doesn't have like any twists or turns in it and that's pretty much it for this bottom band you could take it again to the iron and press it if you want to get you a good crease and make sure that it's going to stay or if you don't want to use the pins you could iron it and it'll pretty much keep this shape until it doesn't but the next step is we're going to take our mini body we're going to take that center back seam of the 
band that we just did that seam we're gonna put it in the back uh at the center back so that the seam is not in the way i also found that when i was sewing this originally i put the seam at the side seam so that you know things would be aligned but it just became very 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 thick and it kind of just ruined my project and made me not want to do it anymore but here we are I kept trying and i did it again so here we go we're just going to continue to pan our uh bottom band to the body all the way around ensuring to catch all the pieces and you see there like i realized i put my band on but i put the seam in the front i didn't want that so i had to take it off and put it on again it was tiring but i had this teacher in high school she was so mean but I loved her so much. She was like the best teacher ever. But she was very, very, very mean. She was very, not very mean. I don't know if that's nice. She was very strict. If something was not right, there was no, let's find a workaround. And when I say teacher in high school, I don't know if I clarified my sewing, my fashion design teacher in high school. I've been trying not to speed up the video so much so you guys can actually see it. I watch everything on like point two or times two uh, speed because... I'm a quick learner and I just be wanting stuff to get done. And I just need to see a few things. But if you are not that person and you need more instruction, I'm trying not to speed up the video so you can see how long it actually takes to get these things done and not thinking that it's going to take you 20 minutes to sew this little gear shirt hoodie because maybe it is not. It probably will take you 20 minutes to cut the fabric out. But either way, here we are. I'm going to sew around that bottom band. And I'm also going to trim the seam allowance because it was just a little bulky, especially if, you um have the expectation that uh you're going to use a fabric that's thicker you definitely want to make sure you trim some of the bulk so we have a body y'all the body is done only thing that's left is the hood the hood is a little bit more finicky and it's not really uh as um like it's pattern driven but it's not as specific as the rest of the pattern pieces so here we go so for this hoodie i am using a shoestring a lot of these things are just scraps that i found around the way this one has metal tips on it just fyi so because it does have metal tips and it's not just like a piece of string i'm going to figure out how much i need i'm thinking like three to four inches that are going to hang below the neck seam so i'm going to cut the string at the top so that i can sew these pieces together and put them inside the hoodie and i get to keep both ends of the laces that have the metal tips on it so this is where you will see me actually sewing um this piece together and one good point about this this pattern piece is a square so if you decide that you want to use a shoe string that's bigger or fatter or you know has some texture or something you might need to add width to one side the side that's not on the fold you're going to put onto one side of this pattern piece to make sure that your you have enough hood left after you have to make the tunnel for your shoestring also i would triple check how big the gear shift is in your car or whomever you're making this for because my gear shift has a little bit of a weird shape so i need a little bit more back hood so that it will go on the way i want it to so those are a couple of things to check so this piece is left rectangular on purpose and you just need to make sure that you are adding or taking away uh width when you're diying this so there's multiple ways you can do this. I decided that I did not want to thread my shoelace through this. So I'm just going to fold over just enough that I can edge stitch this tunnel down without having to like sew it and then thread it through. So I'm like, I just pray I don't stitch on top of the shoelaces, which is definitely something I would do. But I was lucky. I don't know if I was refreshed when I sewed this because I think this was a couple days ago uh, but I did it and I did not sew my shoelaces but so this shoelace part is the front edge of your hoodie just like a hoodie you would wear personally this is where your uh, drawstrings are but the drawstrings cannot come out the bottom because that has to be connected to the neck so about three quarters up from the bottom you're probably going to sew a quarter of an inch seam but sometimes quarter of an inch just become half an inch so you want to give yourself some grace you gonna snip a little hole or you can use grommets. I've seen people do grommets. I'm not doing grommets. Uh, so you snip a little hole here and you want to stick the end of your shoelace through the hole so that now you have a space underneath your shoelace where you can actually sew it to the garment. 
and I didn't think about this originally when I had started making it so I made a note to myself like oh yes I need to move this so that we can actually connect the hood to the body and you can if you choose to make your tunnel first then your hole then you can thread your shoelace just through the hole one side and then out the hole on the other side up to you I just was doing this because I was trying to go quickly but that's the front of your hoodie all right y'all this next step is a little um not like specific again this is where i say you might have to add more length if the hood on the handle on your gear shift is wider you might need more space from the front of your hoodie to the back so what i did here is i just made a little curve so it looks like a hoodie but that top edge there is on the fold so you don't really need to cut it all the way through because you don't cut your shoelaces so what i did was i cut that little corner off like maybe a quarter from that angle and then you just start at the part of your hoodie where it's still a uh, fold and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch three eighths along that curve down the back of the hood making it the hood center back seam just to make it hood shape and then you can attach it to the body so on the pattern piece I tried to put a little bit more information. This is written out in the tutorial on my website if you want more specific kind of spread out like visuals. But this is basically what it's going to look like. So for your hoodie, I wanted them to overlap a little bit at the front. So I made a, a little notch in the center front of my hoodie marking where the front is. But I'm going to place my front drawstring tunnel a little bit past in the front. Then I'm going to start pinning around and then I'm going to stop for a hot second and put the center back seam of the hood with the center back of the back neck. I put a, a, a snip into the center back neck so I knew where it was and I'm just going to match that seam allowance and seam up with that notch. And I'm, you might have to stretch a little bit in between depending on how your uh, fabric is, what type of fabric you're using. So I continue to pin around until I get back to the center front. And uh, you'll see here, I kind of like was trying to pull it around to make sure that it was even and I didn't have any like extra bumps anywhere. And I was like, oh no, it might be a little bit short. So I went ahead and pinned the center front over like left over right or right over left, whichever one. And then I pinned them both together. And then I went back and adjusted the pins. You do want to make sure your laces are not caught up in that little area. Otherwise, you're going to sew them and you're going to have to take it out. So I pinned the front so I can make sure that they both were actually meeting the front. And then I adjust it around. Difficult part here, I think is probably the most difficult part of this process, is you're going to have to get into this opening where the... Um, neck meets the hood and sew in a circle making sure not to sew over your laces making sure to remove your pins taking your time and also i still sewed a quarter of an inch because i thought it made sense again for this area and if your seam allowance gets too long it kind of pops out the neck when it's in your car so you might want to trim this too just to make sure that you you know keep your mini hoodie look mini hoodie looking good and y'all, that is pretty much it for the hoodie. You want to take your pins out. Um, I actually made a mistake. My under layer of my hoodie kind of slipped out. So you will see, or maybe I don't know if you can see, but there was a little hole in the corner and I had to go back. You see one side didn't get caught all the way in. So I had to go back and fix it. But here is the hoodie. This is not the same hoodie, but this is basically what it looks like in your car. Here is the hoodie that I made uh, for the tutorial on my website. I thought it was so cute and you do have to make adjustments based on the ties. But thanks so much for following through my tutorial. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notification button so you know when I post more videos.